Good morning. Our Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Art Corbett. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have made all those reborn in Christ a chosen race and a royal priesthood, grant us the grace to will and to do what you command, that the people called to eternal life may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations to which they have come and gather them from all sides to bring them back to their land. I will make them one nation upon the land in the mountains of Israel, and there shall be one prince for them all. Never again shall they be two nations, and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. No longer shall they defile themselves with their idols, their abominations, and all their transgressions. I will deliver them from all their sins of apostasy and cleanse them so that they may be my people and I may be their God. My servant David shall be prince over them and there shall be one shepherd for them all. They shall live by my statutes and carefully observe my decrees. They shall live on the land that I gave to my servant Jacob the land where their fathers lived, they shall live on it forever, they and their children and their children's children, with my servant David, their prince forever. I will make with them a covenant of peace. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will multiply them and put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling shall be with them, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Thus the nations shall know that it is I, the Lord, who make Israel holy, when my sanctuary shall be set up among them forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant isles and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the land of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings. The grain, the wine, and the oil, the sheep, and the oxen. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgins shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what Jesus had done began to believe in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. 
So the chief priests and the Pharisees convened the Sanhedrin and said, what are we going to do? This man is performing many signs. If we leave him alone, all will believe in him and the Romans will come and take away both our land and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing, nor do you consider that it is better for you that one man should die instead of the people so that the whole nation may not perish. He did not say this on his own, but since he was the high priest for that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation and not only for the nation, but also to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to kill him. So Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, but he left for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, and there he remained with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before Passover to purify themselves. They looked for Jesus and said to one another as they were in the temple area, what do you think, that he will not come to the feast? The Gospel of the Lord. So we pause this morning on this Saturday before Holy Week. It's a time of reflection. It's a time to, to prepare ourselves for what, what is about to unfold before us once again this year as we recall and relive, we hopefully relive this mystery of salvation of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But there are some beautiful readings here, this reading from Ezekiel. It, the, the first reading this morning is a reading of restoration, isn't it? It's a vision of everything coming back together into God. It's all the people of God coming back together from all the places where they've been dispersed. A vision of people living on the land that was destined for them from their fathers, living on it forever, and their servant David will be their prince forever. A covenant of peace, I will multiply them put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling will be with them. I will be their God and they will be my people. So there's this beautiful, it certainly wasn't tangible and it wasn't the reality at the time, nor, ha, nor would it be for another three, 400 years. But, but the fact is, is that there is this prophecy of something that's about to take place. Now, what was a good thing in the first reading now suddenly becomes a bad thing in the second reading because they're saying that this, this Jesus is gonna unite everybody and, this, and the Sanhedrin are going to lose the power that they have over the people. They think that the Romans will come in and that the, the, pro, the product of this reunification is going to be destructive for them. So that Caiaphas stands up and says, okay, here's the solution. To prevent all that from happening, let's let one person just die. What strange words on this Saturday before Holy Week to hear somebody just utter that, well, okay, maybe he just has to die so that everybody else can live. Well, from our perspective now in the future, <clears throat> far in the future from the moment of, of the gospel today, we look back and we say, yes, one person did die so that all people could live. But from our perspective, that looks very different, doesn't it? Not so that the power can be somehow held onto by the leaders of the Jewish people, but so that everybody can be free, so that everybody can know God, so that what was prophesied in the first reading actually will come to pass. It's about to happen. And that's the mystery that we reflect on this morning as we see it unfold, that God's plan from the very beginning was that all of this should come to pass, that we might be witnesses of this salvation of our God. Let us stand for our prayers of the faithful. For the grace to keep loyal and fervent company with our Redeemer during this coming week, as he courageously goes up the Passover, goes up to the Passover to suffer and die for our redemption, we pray to the Lord. That the covenant of peace promised to God, by God to his people may spread as a blessing of peace to all the troubled areas of our world today, especially to the land of Israel. We pray to the Lord. 
for Christians assembled from all the nations into the flock of the Good Shepherd, that the one who makes us holy may continue to lead us into full unity. We pray to the Lord. For all who suffer, whose powers of body and soul are dispersed and scattered by pain, that Jesus may call everything together again by his healing might. We pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, that Jesus who died so that the whole nation would not be destroyed, may bring them to the city of peace, which is the heavenly Jerusalem. We pray to the Lord. For all the intentions that we now include in silence. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer our prayers according to your will and our good, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. (coughs) May the gifts we offer from our fasting be acceptable to you, O Lord, and as an expiation for our sins, may they make us worthy of your grace and lead us to what you promise for eternity, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, Your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. (coughs) Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Have mercy, Lord, on your church as she brings you her supplications. And be attentive to those who incline their hearts before you. Do not allow those you have redeemed by the death of your only begotten Son to be harmed by their sins or weighed down by their trials. Through Christ our Lord. We do have, um, let's see, two announcements this morning. There's going to be an eighth grade uh, retreat for the confirmation students for this spring. It's going to start in about 15 minutes, I think. They're going to start arriving. And the other thing is I'd like you not to forget about our St. Lucie food drive this morning from 10 actually until 2 p.m. The truck will be out in front and and people will be dropping off food. So if you remember the the hungry today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace.